How's yours? <laughs> uh, okay. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Filming on an iPhone right now. First time ever starting out a video with, with one of these. There's my hand, see? Not used to that. We're wrapping up a uh, Guggen week here. And, uh, oh yeah, you know that really nice, awesome, brand new boat smell with fresh carpet, plush, like Dr. Scholl's cushion stuff, and then it's just pristine boxes. Everything's in, in its place. Yeah, that's not happening. <sighs> I'll let the rest of the Guggens borrow my boat. Plus, Rob's boat. I think they fished in it. The rest of the guys fished in it before you even fished. I've never fished in one <laughs> This is kind of what um, boats look like or any vehicles look like, anything really, uh, after we just go hard filming videos all week. So they need to buy us a great steak dinner or something. There's white claws. There's a menagerie of, of tackle. Uh, the most, the cringiest part is this. The dirt, the red dirt. I can tell you, Mike, one rod, I know his footprints. They're very erratic right here. Could also be Peric. You know, power poles half down. Let's race that back up. Yo, no, you no, you have no motor toter. You're full down. Your skag's still there, so that's good. Just want to say a big thank you to Fun and Sun Boats for, again, for letting us borrow these vessels. Uh, promise we're going to have these pristine condition after this week and uh, just got a little carried away, I apologize. Made it out on the lake with my Shoo. boy Flair. Yeah. Shoo! We're gonna do some cranking and I wanna try out some other techniques, but uh, we're basically fishing the grass lines out here at the ranch. I have cleaned up the boat. It looks quite a bit better. There's still some little, little mud zones. Gotta be cleaned up, little pebbles, but uh, She's running good. She looks good offshore too, I gotta say. Flair was driving and I was like, <laughs> dang, that's a good looking vessel right there. There's a nice one there. Just caught it. Ooh. Just caught it with Flair. Shoo! Um, I'm having a real hard time filming this, obviously, guys, because I don't have a camera on me, but I'm gonna throw this guy back. He was hooked right in the schnoozle, right in the middle of his face. And something I've been wanting to do is tell the story on these jigs, the juicy and the thick jig um, and the design and stuff. So when I get my good camera and stuff, when I get back to the house, I'm gonna tell you, but we're just gonna look at some fish's faces and give a couple sniffs first with Flair. He's gotta catch a flight soon, head back to his, his great farm full of animals. Holding my iPhone with my hand, twerking my jig. I'm gonna get one, or Flair's gonna get one here in a second. I've got a three eighths ounce juicy on right now with a bandito bug oh well i should call this the one-handed iphone challenge should. just straight thumbnail view the entire time just straight one rod one reel thumbnail view that's what it looks like oh yeah oh yeah i got me a little grass hole out here that is just it's it's producing bites every time <laughs> Of course, when the camera's on. Dude, was I not getting a bite every time? It was crazy about this place. It was completely dry five years ago. So all these fish are, they are they're all less than five years old. Just imagine two years. Mega fatty. Okay. Let you go, sir. Oh, yeah, baby. Juicy. Thick. I'll tell you about the names here in a second, but let me just first of all say I've been in the fishing industry for quite a long time it has always been one of my uh, dreams little small things that you know I wish I could do to uh, 
create some jigs, help help develop some great jigs that I could put my input in from all my years jig fishing. I fell in love with jig fishing early on, helped me catch some some of my biggest bass uh, still to this day. You know, PB, I think I catch some of my biggest bass throughout the year on jigs. We wanted to make sure that when we were developing these jigs with Ketchco, that we were gonna do it right. You know, we didn't wanna have like th the jig where the skirt's kinda falling off and the, and the brush guard's weak and you know, the hook's kinda crummy. Like we wanted to do it right out of the gate. So it took some time. <laughs> it's taken a while to watch this hit the shelves in big box stores and online and this has actually been one of our best selling SKUs. Man, it means a lot to me. So I wanna thank you guys, first of all, for everyone that has fished these. Uh, thank you, I hope you're not disappointed because put a lot of time and effort into these. The Ketchco team, guys, is amazing. Their design team, their concept team, uh, and their go-to-market team is all really great. I can't say enough great things, but to be able to, to watch their design team, um, basically take the stuff that, that we were drawing out and then bring it to life and digital CADs uh, and then samples and then us, us fishing on the water and it all just, it went really well. We had a few hiccups. Uh, we had a few hiccups on brush guards and um, you know, hooks and things like that and we, we got it all worked out. But the first jig we wanted to create was the Juicy Jig. And the Juicy Jig, it's a casting style jig for all, the, for all that are not familiar. Break one of these half ounce black and blues out real quick. This is, you know, if you don't have a half ounce black and blue casting jig in your tackle box, what's wrong with you? The head style on a casting jig, overall, it's like the the, the rover of, of jigs. I think that was actually one of the names we wanted to come, come up with, but uh, we came up with Juicy just because it's so awesome. You could kind of flip with this bait. Uh, in fact, I, I have and I do sometimes when I've just got it tied on and you know I'm in a pinch or whatever. Um, you can throw it into cover, but it's really designed to be able to cast out fish on the bottom, fish light cover, maybe just fish on the sink, like if, you know, if you're fishing around docks or something like that, uh, pitching it, uh, you can swim it. A casting jig is just an overall, you can literally do like everything with them. They're just not specialized in like swimming or uh, flipping in a heavy cover. So that's why we have other jigs. Uh, it is a low profile line tie that is offset of the hook point so you get a really clear hook set and having a low profile line tie also allows you to work it through the cover a little bit easier. You don't have that big line tie sticking up to get, get you snagged. It has a flat bottom so you can sit this bait on the bottom and if, when you have your trailer on there, say you have a bandito bug or something like that, uh, it's going to sit flat and then your trailer is going to pop up and give that nice defensive crawfish or bluegill posture, you know, that bass react to. On the brush guard, we developed a brush guard that already has sort of a fan to it. It's got an oval shape, so it's not it's not just a circle. So you really, it's ready to fish right out of the package, brush guard wise. You can trim it up from there if you want to trim it down. You know, I always like to flare mine a little bit before I fish it. Uh, we went with a mustad hook. This is like, the, the perfect hook for getting a good hook set without like fishing he really heavy line. You're not using 65 pound braid. Maybe you're using 15 pound tests, kind of you know clear water. You've got a, uh, a thinner wire hook, but it's still strong enough to boat flip five pound bass in. For one of my pet peeves always with any type of skirted bait is always the rubber bands. Uh, you know, they're, they're good first right out of the box maybe, but then after a while they get crusty and then your skirt starts to kind of slide down and it looks terrible in the water. So really the whole purpose of having a skirt on a bait, it has flare to it. Um, and when that bait is flaring, it looks like a bluegill. It's stopping and it's you know, flaring out its gills and its pectoral fins or a crawfish that's giving that defensive posture or any fish that's about to get eaten. It's like, oh crap, you know, don't eat me, man. I'm trying to look big. So you have that pulsating uh, look to it. And when a jig stops in the water and then the skirt flares out, it's just, woo. So what we wanted to do was make sure we're doing a hand tied skirt and bump that thing close tight up to the head so that we're getting a good flare in the water. The more you trim your skirt, the more flare you're going to get. Um, and then lastly, 
we wanted to go with a double plastic keeper style. You know, that's another pet peeve of mine is putting a plastic on my jig and then you know, I set the hook on a few fish or I miss a fish or whatever, I swing on them and then the plastic sliding down and I'm having to constantly go back and you know, there's some that like screw lock on there and you can never get off, but they're hard to get on there in the first place. And I, I just wanted a double hook keeper or a double plastic keeper, excuse me. So this jig has it. It's got one on the top, one on the bottom. It's just an outstanding overall jig. All the jigs come in some really great colors, but definitely want to have black and blue. The paint jobs, my gosh, they are solid too, y'all. They are just so solid. You can't tell I'm passionate. Right there on the bottom of the head is half ounce. You know, if you're fishing a three eighths, half ounce, three quarter, one, you don't have to guess. Okay, now let's look at the thick jig. So the thick jig, the name implies you're fishing thick cover for thick bass, maybe. We're hitting the market with a three eighths and a half, and we're also coming out with a three quarter and a one. And those hook sizes are gonna be a little beefier, a little heavier wire on the uh, heavier weights. We've designed them so that, you know, if you're fishing 20 pound test or a lighter braid or, or whatever, uh, you're still gonna get a really good hook set. When you're fishing like three quarters and ones, that's mostly like you're punching grass, you're fishing deep, heavy cover, trees, something like that. And you want a really heavy hook that you can just, you know, slant, you know, boat flip an eight pounder, why not? The thick jig is a flipping style jig. So it's designed to go through cover. If you look at the head on this, again, low profile line tie, but it is in line with the rest of the hook. Just meaning that uh, the, the line tie aligns with uh, the hook. That's for strength reasons and penetrating through the cover reasons. Uh, it's not gonna snag up on anything as it's going through because it's it's in line it's the, e the little path of least resistance the cover will just go around it and it's kind of got that bullet uh teardrop style head to it it's got a little bit of a keel on the bottom so when it's falling it could bounce off you know deflect off a cover but also punch right through again oval oval style um brush guard on there. Your weight is also listed on there. It's just off to the side. Um, it was kind of hard to do this one because the, the, there's not a whole lot of flat surfaces on this head, but uh, we still wanted to put it on there. So it's just off to the side a little bit. Look at these paint jobs, y'all. You know, look at this color right here. It's called Blue Craw. Uh, what, an, uh, what an impressive color that is. You put a little blue baby um, crack and crawl on the back of this thing. Oh my God. Gosh, it is sexual chocolate. And versus the casting jig, a flipping style jig isn't really meant to be worked on the bottom. It's meant to be constantly working through a piece of cover. So when this hits the bottom, it's probably gonna roll over on its side, just like that. But when it's going through cover, it's gonna deflect off and go through and down and come back up through it. And that's exactly what you want in a flipping jig. And you wanna be able to yank on them hard that skirt not come off, your plastic not move. Uh, we made this jig with that in mind. Let's just take a look at a few more colors, y'all. Uh, really, attention to detail. Look at the head color, look at the paint jobs. Th these are, these are top-notch paint, they don't chip. We've really spent a ton of time making sure you're getting the best jig for your money. And the skirts, they just, they match the heads really great. So this is bluegill. PBJ classic. My personal favorite, Cowboy Craw. There's hardly a daggum crawfish or bluegill in the lake that doesn't match this color right here. It's got like a coppery nose to it. It's uh, it's like a, a pumpkin colored skirt with a little bit of a black and red and then some purple hues to it. And it just, it just matches everything. If you had to buy one color, for everything, well, first of all, I'll get black and blue, but also get cowboy craw. I'm gonna put a green pumpkin trailer on that. I'm gonna put a natural uh, trailer on that. I'm gonna put blue baby on that. I can put a ton of different colors on that. And it's gonna look amazing, mix and match. I just love jigs, y'all. I love jigs. I had a lot to do with these because I'm super passionate about them, and I hope you guys are gonna go out there and fish them. I will leave them linked uh, for shopcarls.com right here. You can go get you some. Uh, if you sign up to be a Shop Carl's Club member, you're going to save 30% off the entire site. That includes all the jigs, and it includes the uh, Guggenbaits, 
pretty much everything on the entire site if you sign up to be a Carl's Club member. So it's really worth it if you're gonna be buying any sort of uh, amount of tackle over, over the year. And one little tip I'll leave you guys, if you're gonna fish the Kraken Cross, which I'm sure a lot of you are on these, take your Kraken Craw right here. These are segmented. So what you wanna do is you look at the segments, take the top two off. We did that purposely. Uh, so it makes it easy for you to, to really line this up. Then you take it and you're gonna rig it all the way up, thread it right between the craw shell there, and then push it all the way up, double hook, double plastic keepers. Always split your arms, your appendages, and look at that, y'all. Look at the sexiness that is happening on that jig and crawl trailer that is ready for the nearest body of water. <laughs> Once again, y'all, I want to humbly thank you for being a part of this channel. Um, I've been on YouTube 10 years now. Now I'm just really having fun and I'm getting, a, I'm, I'm able to just develop great things, working with Catchco, working with Guggen Squad. We're just having a great time and really we're, we're changing up the industry standard a little bit, uh, if you can't tell. I think, I think a lot of the, uh, the storefronts you'll see, you're gonna see a lot of green uh, here in the future, um, thanks to y'all. And uh, big thanks to Ketchco too, for just giving us a chance to uh, you know, work with them and listen to us. And, and uh, I just can't say enough, y'all. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, May the, may the spirit be with you as well. I'm gonna sign it off for the day, y'all. Don't forget, wintertime fishing, jigs are good. You can fish them slow, especially if you get a sunny day, pitching them around cover. What bam You can pretty much fish jigs anywhere from 50 feet to daggum one foot of water. They're the most versatile lure out there, in my opinion. Anyway, enough about jigs. God bless you. I'll see y'all on the next angle.